Welcome to another episode of Ananda Marga DharmaCast. This is a podcast series looking at topics in spirituality using the teachings of Sri Sri Ananda Murti as our foundation. And I'm the host, Dara Veda Pragyananda, or a lot of people call me Dara Veda, whichever you like is fine. Today I want to address the topic of something which I call spiritual mindfulness. So I think a lot of people have heard of mindfulness. In fact, it's, you can say it's all the rage in, in the sphere of meditation. And basically it comes from a Buddhist practice where the meditators try to maintain a certain kind of awareness. So what is that awareness? In some practices, they meditate on the breath going in and the breath going out. They pay careful attention to that and they observe if there are any sensations caused by that. They observe them, but they don't react. So that's the idea. So observe, but don't react. There's other kind of uh, Buddhist meditation where they meditate on the sensations in the body and it's the same thing where you observe, but don't react. So here, when I talk about spiritual mindfulness, I will talk about another kind of mindfulness which also comes from a meditation practice. It comes from the, the you can say the yoga meditation, the, or sp I call it spiritual meditation. Meditation when you're not meditating on the breath per se, but you're meditating on some spiritual theme or object or concept, concept is a good word, it could be a supreme being, but we won't argue which supreme being or what supreme being, but however you imagine it, but the, definitely it's a spiritual kind of meditation and we're trying to be attentive to that spiritual concept. Now the problem, there are two problems with both kinds of meditation, is that no matter how good you are, the mind gets assailed by many different thoughts and waves and, and you lose your attention, you, you have to come back. It, it's not easy to really focus or to be 100% mindful of what you're trying to observe. And that goes for whether it be the breath or whether you're trying to keep a spiritual idea in your mind. So that's one dilemma. And then the second dilemma is that you can do this very well, or as reasonably well, in your period of meditation in the morning or in the evening or both, and for one hour. If you're really strong, you can do one hour. Even if very strong, you can do an hour and a half, and then you can do another hour and a half in the evening. So even that very strong, you know, sadhaka or spiritual aspirant will, will only cover three hours but they're 24 hours. So how could we extend this attentiveness or this mindfulness throughout the day? This is the question. So here, I want to read a story. Uh, it comes in a discourse from Sri Sri Anandamurti where he talks about uh, one instance of one spiritual aspirant who had a method of how he did it. So here, I'm, we, let's look at it. Over a thousand years ago, there was a wise and devout Buddhist monk in Bengal, popularly known as Busuku. He was a good poet, a humorist, and a spiritual aspirant of excellent category. And his name was derived as follows. Bu, at the time of Bojana, he used to think, of Parama Purusha or Supreme Consciousness. Su, at the time of Shayanam, lying down, he used to think of Parama Purusha. Ku, before every karma action, he used to think of Parama Purusha. One who always takes the name of the Supreme Consciousness while eating and drinking, sitting and walking, before every action is called Busuku. When one sleeps on a bed or a cot, one's body comes in contact with the bed or cot. When eating, one's hand and mouth come in touch with rice and vegetables, etc. When thinking, the mind comes in touch with thought. 
everything, crude or subtle, is his or the Supreme Consciousness manifestation. In the process of taking constant cosmic ideation, the spiritual aspirant experiences great bliss within. This is called Dharma Meg Ananda. So here he is revealing something which this spiritual aspirant did. See, the idea is that we always, when you're doing spiritual meditation, you want to always think of, uh, of your, your object of meditation, the destination place where you're going to. But you get diverted, you forget about it. So how to remember? So what this monk used to do was before his principal activities, boo, before eating, he would think of it. Yes, this food is a manifestation of that Supreme Consciousness. And I'm doing that. Then, um, when lying down, because you have, every day you're going to do that, every day you're eating, every day you have to lie down. Before lying down, I'm also going to, to think of that Supreme Consciousness. And ku is, is a, a shorthand for karma. I will extend it out to every activity of the day. Before every activity of the day, I'm going to do that. So and then you can extend it out to more activities before I take my bath, before even I do my meditation, I'm going to remember. And what are you remembering? So you're remembering that everything of this universe is a manifestation of that consciousness. So when you do that, then even though you're engaged in a physical activity, you're remembering that, that this thing that I'm doing, this, 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 let's say I'm, I'm picking up my, my phone now, got it here. This phone is a manifestation of cosmic consciousness. And when I put it down, even the place I'm putting it down to, it's also an extension of that cosmic consciousness. And when you do that, when you keep that remembrance, your mind is always engaged in, in, that, in that thought. The same as when you were doing sitting meditation, except that you're still, you're still in the world, you're acting, but you're, you're still engaged with that destination place where you're trying to direct your mind. And this is spiritual mindfulness, if you could do that more and more. Uh, and then it's also called Brahma Bhava. That means to maintain the thought of the Supreme Consciousness always. Another name for it is called Madhu Vidya. Madhu Vidya means, Madhu means sweet, Vidya knowledge. It's a sweet knowledge that, that all these things are an expression of that Supreme Consciousness. And this is a very good kind of spiritual practice that you can do and you're not limited to the time in the morning and the time in the evening, but you can try to practice it all day long. So, but one more thing though, and sometimes when I, it's also, you can also call it karma yoga, because during all your, your karma, during all your activity, it becomes spiritualized. But sometimes there's some people who want to take a shortcut. They say, well, that sounds easier than just sitting in meditation. It's, it's hard. You have to sit for one hour, half hour, you know, your body gets tired. And I just do this stuff during the day. But the problem is that if you don't do your sitting practice, but you're concentrated, concentrated positive thinking in the morning and the evening, you won't remember as much in the, during the day. So that, that, that's what it is. So now the question comes, there are two questions here. How to remember? So in the practice that I do, there is a shorthand mantra. We, we call it Guru Mantra or Second Lesson Mantra where each one is given, we're given a certain way how to do it. It, it varies, but, but the concept is the same for all, actually. It varies per individual. But the concept is that you're trying to remember that the thing that you're dealing with is cosmic consciousness. And for those who don't have that practice, you go into the Vedas, and there is a phrase, a very commonly known phrase. It's called, it says, the translation is, all oh, this is that. All this is that. That's what they say in the Vedas. That all of this, all of this manifestation is really that cosmic consciousness. 
In fact, even the Beats Boys, who studied under the Maharishi, the, the guru of the Beatles, um, he was popular in the late 60s, you know. So they went there and they learned that, and they made a song. It's called All This Is That. It's a good song. I like it. So remember, all this is that. Now the question comes, how are you going to do it? How are you going to do it? So like this Busuku, he had, he, he had a method before his principal activities, he, he remembered, and then he tried to extend it out more. So I had a friend who taught me one trick that he used to do. So he said, you see, I have to go to work every day. And I go in my building there, you know, the office. He said, before I open the door, I remember well, that what is what. <laughs> he, he remembers that cosmic consciousness. And he said, by doing that, there's so many other activities that take place during the day that, he said, that covers all those activities. Now, I don't know if that covers all the, those activities, but it's a good way to start. Before you start any action, remember what you're doing and then try to do more and more of that. So before you turn the ignition on the car, remember this car is a manifestation of that cosmic consciousness. The place where I'm going is that cosmic consciousness. So remember, always remember. Now, regarding meditation, also people come and complain about another problem, is that you're going to lose time. You're going to lose time. Yeah, you lose an hour in the morning, you lose an hour in the evening, or a half hour, a half hour. It's, it's time, you could have done something else. But I say, no, you don't lose any time because you will gain time. Because as, as you do this practice, and you do that practice, you become more attentive, not just while you're sitting, but throughout the whole day, you become spiritually mindful, you're mindful, you're attentive of everything. And when you're mindful, you make less mistakes. Less mistakes. Think about when you make a mistake, you have to do it over. That takes time. So the more mistakes you make, the more you have to do it over. You have to go back to your house, pick up that thing which you left behind, and come back. It's, it's a pain. You don't want to do that. So gain time by meditating. Make your mind sharp. Make it mindful, spiritually mindful. And it, it can be a great thing. So that's what I mean by spiritual mindfulness. Awareness. Awareness that you are not just a sack of skin and bones. And this universe is not just um, a play of, of colors and shapes and forms, but behind those colors and shapes and forms, there is something deeper. So that's all I want to say today. And I, I thank you for, for hanging in there, listening to this, if you made it this far, and try to practice. And I have also a um, suggestion here. Like my friend had this shortcut of, before he goes in work, he says, he, he remembers, and then he tries to cover that whole activity of the day. If you have any tricks, how you remember, some people tie a string around there their finger to remember something important. So if you have any um, creative ways how to extend this mindfulness throughout the day, whatever, whatever kind of mindfulness you practice, but how you would extend it more and more, put it in the comments. And that brings me to this point. If you're watching here on YouTube, uh, like it if you like it. Only if you like it, I won't, I won't bend your arm. And if you can make a comment, that's great. That helps to actually spread the message to more people and subscribe, subscribe to the podcast. And if you're listening on an audio platform, also subscribe. And if you have an option to, to give a comment or something about it, then do that too. And last thing, if you have any suggestions of topics that you want me to address in, in future, future episodes, then put it into the comments for them or, or contact me uh, personally and I put some links below and you can probably you can find uh, how to get my contact information. So that's all I want to say except for one more thing. Namaskar means I salute the divinity within you. <laughs>